Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. There's no shortage of microphone options out there these days. And even if you're just recording with a microphone on a stand at your desk, handheld dynamic microphones are still popular because they're durable and relatively inexpensive. But just how little can you spend and still get good sound? Today I'm taking a quick look at the Pile PD Mic 58. It's a dynamic handheld microphone, which you can get on Amazon for around $13. Many years ago, when I worked at an auto parts chain, we sold cheap car stereos and speakers, and the brand was Pile. It's interesting to see such an odd off-brand still kicking around in the audio market. But let's find out if it's any good. For today's testing, I'll be comparing it to Shure's cheapest offering, the PGA 48. While quite a bit more expensive than the Pile, for $39, the Shure is still inexpensive compared to a lot of mics out there. In terms of build quality, the Shure is a little heavier, and it looks a little bit nicer overall, which isn't surprising, but the Pile really doesn't seem too bad for $13. The capsule of the Pile has a cheaper look to it, and my guess is that it doesn't reject handling noise very well, being rigidly mounted like it is. But I wouldn't be surprised if neither of these are very good in that respect. But how do they actually sound? To find out, I'm going to read a short paragraph with each microphone, and I'm not going to tell which microphone is which until the end. And just for fun, I'm going to throw in a third, more expensive dynamic microphone as well. Will the difference be obvious? Let's find out. Kyle lay awake listening to the sound seeping in from outside. The distant whooshing sound of the highway was currently being drowned out by a neighbor revving the engine in his car over and over. This seemed to be a nightly routine for them. Were they trying to keep a cold, carbureted engine running, or did they just like the sound? Who knows? They finally put the car in gear and roared down the road. The loud engine sound faded away, and the gentle whooshing of the distant highway became the dominant sound once again. Kyle wasn't tired. He had his eyes closed, but that was because that's what you do when you're lying in bed and have to get up in seven hours. But he wasn't thinking about falling asleep. He was trying not to think about anything in particular and it seemed to be working. He was watching the strange hints of colors and patterns shifting around in front of his closed eyes. Subtle suggestions of vision that were only possible because of the tiny amount of light bleeding in through his closed eyelids. He hadn't closed the blinds, and the light from a full moon streamed in through the window. Suddenly there they were. The thoughts he hadn't realized he was thinking. Was it possible for our subconscious to have thoughts running through it when we don't realize it? Probably. Kyle squeezed his eyes tighter, causing sudden changes to the patterns and swirls in the vision his closed eyes presented. He tried to focus on that. Thoughts of tomorrow's test were not what he was avoiding. It was true he hadn't studied, but he was confident he'd still get a good enough score to pass the class with either an A or maybe a B, and that was fine. It was thoughts of the other thing happening tomorrow that made him squeeze his eyes tighter as if hoping to block them from his mind's eye. So what do you think? Even if you could tell a difference, could you tell which one was the $100 microphone versus which one was the $13 microphone? Mic A was the Shure PGA 48, Mic B was the Rode PodMic, and Mic C was the Pile PD Mic 58, which I'm in fact using right now. So what do you think? Would this $13 microphone be good enough for you? If you were putting together a setup for streaming or voiceover or podcasts, could you get away with a $13 dynamic microphone? Or after hearing the comparisons, would you prefer to save up and spend more? In terms of some of the things that might not have been super obvious from the testing, the Pile PD Mic 58 and the Shure PGA 48 both required a very similar amount of gain, and both required slightly less gain than the Rode Pod Mic. Not a whole lot, but to get similar levels, I had the uh, gain on my interface set about 3 dB or so less. Also, neither the PD Mic 58 or the PGA 48 are excellent at rejecting plosives. So, um, you know, not a huge consideration, but just something that if you're talking directly into the microphone and you have it very close, you're going to want to, you know, kind of be careful to avoid popping the microphone. It's not bad at all, but not quite as good as something like the Rode Pod Mic or, for instance, like a Shure SM7B with the big foam on the end of it. Um, you know, these aren't going to reject plosives quite as well as that. The other thing is that I was correct in that there's no kind of isolation or anything for the capsule internally, so any kind of bumps or taps of anything, you know, of the microphone, you know, handling noise, that kind of thing, it's going to come through pretty heavy. 
just something to be aware of if you're going to be mounting this just on a solid stand on a desk. You know, you might want to have a pad under it or something like that just to avoid, you know, little bumps of the desk from coming through so heavy. But there you have it. $13 dynamic microphone and probably the cheapest XLR microphone I've tested to date. And I have to say, it's not bad. <laughs> so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.